Hi family, how are you? It's me, Miss Sam. Mwah! Hugs and kisses to you. Okay, so I'm going to do a reading on how Lisa Marie feels about her mother wanting to be buried next to her ex-husband. Okay, Buried in proximity to Lisa and uh, buried as if she were the queen of Graceland or the the Elvis Presley's wife even yeah let's pull some cards maybe something different will come out I don't know it seems as if The energy is always the same. We have this Priscilla like a bull in a china shop. And we have everybody else kind of exasperated, fed up, can't be bothered and not surprised by the way she is. So it's becoming like same, same. I feel when I approach the readings. And of course, when I do the readings, it's completely, <laughs> we get completely different outcome. Okay, let's pull some cards. This is the um, Oracle de la Triad. All right. How does Lisa Marie feel about her mother's requests? Okay. Hmm. Oh dear. Temptation, which is like temptation. Okay. See, there's the, you know, the energy of evil, Eve being tempted to bite the apple, as we're told in the biblical version of things, that Eve is the one who's responsible for the rack and ruin of humanity, because she was the one who was tempted by Satan to take a bite of that apple, the apple that she was warned not to eat. But hold on a second, okay? Temptation. Temptation. Let's get a clarification card for this. It's like Lisa's saying, don't tempt me. What does that mean when spirit conveys that message? Don't tempt me. Don't try me. Don't try me. So what is Lisa saying? Is there this kind of uh, spiritual threat? That if... Priscilla continues on this course, continues to push the matter. You've already been told no once. But you know, Priscilla is hard headed, and I said, as I said, like a bull in a china shop. She's just oblivious to the chaos and the destruction that she causes when she goes in there like a bull, smashing china. But I'll, I'll you know, mashing up all the porcelain and stuff like that benediction oh okay with this benediction card here next to temptation here this is uh, not a threat but a promise from Lisa and this is in regards to Navarone this is just psychic energy it's not factual this is for entertainment purposes only but this benediction is a promise and it's coming to upright for now but it easily 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 can turn into the reverse where a benediction or a blessing can become a curse and a cuss out and crosses and all the rest of it okay but for now Lisa's spirit is playing nice she don't want to go there this is the second time that she's warned her mother in this type of way I don't know if you remember the video I did in Senegal where um, I recorded it in Senegal and her mother Lisa said to her mother to leave my daughter alone that's the title of the video where Lisa Marie warned Priscilla leave my daughter alone well same energy has come up here because she's saying if Priscilla wants to really push this matter I think there's more that she wants to say, so I'll go back into the cards in just a second. But 
if Priscilla really wants to be that bull and get buck, then Lisa going to buck back. <laughs> here we have benediction here. You can see the hand there, which is stop. Stop. Pump your brakes. Stop. Okay. Stop. Right, let's pull the next card to clarify that. I'm just leaning forward here on this chair so I can be seen in here. <laughs> Malha. Now, I just want to get the exact wording for this. But you can see here is a depiction of Priscilla. This is where she wants to be, where she's saying that she wants to be. Okay. There is a suggestion on here before I even look up the word mal her, which is card 40, which is, yeah. See, this energy came up before, misfortune. That Lisa Marie's energy, her spirit can make this happen. If this is really what Priscilla desires, because you see, to get to Elvis's grave, you can't just go there as you are. You've got to go from step one to step two. Lisa's saying she can make step one happen for her mother. She needs to be careful. Be careful. Because the combined energies added to Lisa Marie's wrath, which is a genuine and it's an authentic wrath, and it's a justified, justifiable wrath. Yeah. You see, well, the fakeness of so-called happy families, PR opportunities, and uh, oh, everything is nice and everything is wonderful and everything is great. That doesn't exist in the afterlife. In that realm, things are what they are. And so her intentions are seen for exactly as they are. There's no cloak and dagger, smoke and mirrors, jiggery pokery, you know, lying, fakery, and all the rest of it, tarting things up to make it look a certain way. No, 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 no. Lisa knows exactly what her mother is about. And she's saying, you got to be careful what you wish for, lady. You see, because her mother has been harassing her, harassing her energy forcibly contacting her where if Lisa wanted to contact her mother she would don't call me I'll call you because it's possible if Lisa felt that way towards her mother mother I miss you mother every day I used to see you or speak to you I miss you uh, uh, I, I just need to be close to you no 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 it's none of that None of that at all. Lisa is telling her, watch out. I can make this happen. How bad do you want it? Don't tempt me. Because this thing can go either way. Good or bad. Don't let me bless you out. Don't let me bless Navarone out. Don't let my wrath be felt. And don't let me curse you from the grave. Neither Navarone, who is behind you, bit like the puppet master, mocking spirit against Lisa. I'll pull two more cards, but you get the point, family. <laughs> oh. Oh. <sighs> Card. Scientology. Oh. 
Okay, this is getting a little bit spicy now. Are we getting to the nitty gritty? Virtues, something that kind of, it's like some kind of anti something, some kind of alchemy, astronomy, philosophy, virtues, water, we've got Neptune's trident and we've got Sages here in the reverse. Sages card nine. Nine usually refers to business, but hold on a second. Well, in general, Ifa energies. But we got Sages. Uh, wow. Wisdom in reverse. So what does this mean in terms of science and Scientology and Priscilla? Does it mean that Priscilla has some kind of special inclination or special uncanniness? Does it mean, as, we, as we've been calling her, does it mean that she's a witch? And she has this special aptitude for science. And if that science is turned upside down, how useful will Priscilla be to the Church of Scientology? If they have no further use for her, they have plenty of use for her money, but to have an actual role for her, a role of importance where she is seen, perhaps in a role of authority, is Lisa saying that she'll pull the rug out from underneath her mother's feet? Because that's what her mother really cares about. The status, the authority, the control, the clout. Is Priscilla the clout queen of Scientology? Is she? John Travolta's wife isn't there anymore. Leia Remini is not there anymore. Shelley gone. Gone where? We don't know. Jada is hiding, ducking and diving behind a banana tree. Pretending like she is, she is and she ain't. Will's walked off that way in the same way as Dwayne Martin. Wherever Dwayne Martin walks, Will's gone in that direction. Willow and Jaden over there in LA selling free meal or giving free meals away on Skid Row because they just can't be bothered with mum and dad, Will and Jada. Zenon, the overlord, who doesn't exist, he's just a sketch somewhere. So who is the grand dame of Scientology now? Ain't Tom Cruise. All he's doing is just bitching and moaning and saying people need to do more. Give more money, more money, more money. Jumping on Oprah's sofa, more money, more money, more money. Danny Masterson. Well, they sold him up the Swanee, and now they're about to pull out all these different skeletons in his cupboard as well. More, because apparently there's more victims. Disclaimer. I mean, we could go on and on, couldn't we? Practically, dear, damn near everybody ran off from Scientology, or don't want no parts of it. So Lisa is saying, look, I couldn't help those girls with the Masterson trial because they took me out. Y'all all conspired to take me out before it started, before the proceedings started. Whip the money out of my hand. Now the only thing you care about apart from Navarone and a new baby that's not born yet, we don't know who the mama is, but many of you suspect it's Navarone's wife. Well here we have Lisa threatening to take away the only thing that Priscilla really has left, which is why she went so hard for the money. 
she didn't get to enjoy any of that money not even a croissant she was able to buy not even a couple of trips to Trader, Trader Joe's damn near 10 trips to Target if she's lucky and certainly no flights to Scotland to do any more appearances all that got to be paid for she can't afford it the money gone straight to Scientology but more interestingly the wisdom the canniness, the knack, the aptitude, the secret practices, the thing that gives her genuine clout. Lisa saying, uh uh, from over here, I can F shit up. <laughs> I can mess some things up from over this side. Do you know that? I can play with the energies and manipulate the energies to make you look like Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> ah, Priscilla. That is the thing that Priscilla hates more than anything in the, in the world. Don't call me stupid. I'm highly intelligent. Remember I referred to her pseudo-scientific, slightly socio-political ideas. Do you remember in that interview that she did with Piers Morgan, where I said, you know, if you sat down with Priscilla, you had dinner with her, she would tell you some things. She got some ideas. And remember we did a reading that suggested that she would go off and volunteer herself as almost like a Scientology guinea pig for this type of innovation and that, for the greatness and glory of Scientology. But Lisa's saying, uh uh, mama slow your roll. You're done enough. You're tampered with everybody enough. You're agitated, my father. You're agitated, papa. You agitated him. You ask me to go to him to ask him for your unreasonable and diabolical request. Knowing that the man is going to say no, his energy is going to oppose it. Knowing that Miss Gladys would have some kind of thunderstorm and cloud come and settle over your head before all hell breaks loose. Knowing that Sunny and Red would be over there. You all mentioned Sunny and Red yesterday. Huh? saying one of the subbies, one of the beautiful subbies said that Uncle Elvis would prefer to have Sonny and Red buried next to him than Priscilla. And I, I agreed. I, I put a comment in there. I said, of course, because Elvis knew that Red really loved him. You see, you see that book? That expose was spearheaded by Sonny. Sonny was the one who was feeling bitter. You could tell. He was the one that was feeling bitter because there's so many secrets that Sonny had to keep, right? So many so-called indiscretions and things like that, that he could have talked about. That's certainly not in that book, whether they were committed by Elvis or other people. There's a lot more, there was a lot more meat to the thing, but Sonny did not talk about it. So he only did what he, he it was just like a little bit of the icing on the cake. He just skimmed the surface and put it in a book and it was bitterness behind that but red if you notice the interviews the the um press the press interviews for the book sonny was kind of quiet even on the, re the audio recording that he did the conversation between him and elvis where elvis said to him look just let pat know i'm here for you guys still you could hear from Sonny, you can hear from Red's tone that this is a man who he loved. Red, and I was, I said to myself, I was going to do, when I was in Morocco, I was going to do a reading with Red because his energy sat with me for a little while. Hmm? And when that happens, I have to do the reading. But as things went along, I didn't get the chance to do it. But I'm talking about Red now. He loved Uncle Elvis and he loved him deeply with a passion. There's something about red-headed people. They feel things very, very deep. 
to the bone, to the marrow. They're passionate, passionate people. They see things in a variety of ways. And really, Sonny was the one who was like, well, you know, we need to make a, we need to make some income now. You know, Vernon has gone and done this thing and dismissed us like we didn't matter. You know, after all that we've put in. So let's jo let's just go ahead and write this book. And against Red's better judgment, because he was hurt, but he wasn't bitter. There's a difference. So I say all that to say, Lisa knows this as well. Even though Lisa had major beef with the Memphis Mafia, no doubt, major beef, but less beef with Red, it's fair to say. Because I can't speak for all of them, but I know Red's energy. And he felt and he loved and he had heart and he wasn't fake a day in his life. He wasn't. He's re the real deal, real. Anyway, just to remind you of what the cards are. Temptation, for temptation, you know, it's unleashing of a new dawn, which will end at the grave for Priscilla, if she really wants to push it. She's at the real latter end of her life. And she has chosen to talk about the end. She hasn't gone to Lisa's energy and talked about, oh, I need another 20 years because there's a new baby coming and I'm so excited. And, you know, can we let bygones be bygones and please don't torment me when I'm sleeping and this, that and the other. She did, she's not gone to her like that. she gone to her and said, ask your daddy. I want a place of privilege and a space of clout next to his thing. And Lisa's like, why are you bothering me for? Can I get no peace from your lady? You bothered me when I was alive and now I'm dead. You're still bothering me. Leave me alone. You got what you wanted. Leave me be. But matter of fact, since you're going to bother me, let me warn you here. This can easily reverse. You're, you and Navarro can get it. You can't hurt me on this side. Over here, you can't hurt me. You can't, not anymore. I do not have to play by your rules anymore. I'm over here. But since you're in a hurry, the thing you care about, Miss Clout Queen, D Scientology, I'm going to reverse this wisdom that you have and the wisdom that other people credit you for. Because they look up to you, you old witch. They look up to you. They know you're different. They know you're special. They know you're persistent. They know you're uncanny. They know you're weird. Truth be known, Navarone gets all of that from her. She was always like that. Always. Miss Gladys died and then, hey presto, up pops Priscilla. My name is Miss Sam, www.celestialtowerreadings.com. This reading has been done with the Oracle de la Triad and it's purely for entertainment purposes only. This has been the reading on how Lisa Marie feels about her mother's request to be buried at Graceland next to the king, our Uncle Elvis, Mr. Elvis Aaron Presley, son of Vernon and son of Miss Gladys. Ache, Chukudalo, inshallah, tomorrow. Bless.